And yeah, we'll go ahead and get started with who's on. So, all right. <clears throat> Good morning, everybody. Those who are on, thank you so much. Um, we are we are beginning a incredible day with an incredible presentation. And I'm gonna use this word over and over again. An incredible guy. He's your AirPods, ain't he? Uh, and um, so I am I am grateful uh, for for my my brother uh, who uh, really is is doing some groundbreaking things in the kingdom, and he and his uh, uh, amazing daughter are gonna be leading us in this time. So. Uh, everybody, everybody, mute your phone. Oh, mute your phone. Everybody, mute your devices. Uh, we're gonna. We're still trying to go Facebook Live, so Napoleon will, will let us know when we're live on Facebook. So we're gonna turn it over now to Dr. Jeffrey Dennis from Akron, Ohio, who will be leading us in a um, session today on 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 the mental health of spiritual leaders. All right. Thank you, Bishop, <clears throat> and uh, good morning to everyone. Um, we're certainly honored to have this opportunity to be in fellowship with you by way of technology, and also to, um, to always uh, be connected to talk about uh, issues that are pertinent to um, pastoral work, pastoral survival, and um, doing the will of God. And so thank you for allowing us to share, Bishop. We appreciate your kingship. We appreciate the opportunity, uh, opportunities that you've extended over the, over the years. I am, um, we're so blessed this morning to be joined um, by uh, our clinical coordinator this morning, um, the clinical coordinator of the Minority Behavior Health Group in Akron, Ohio, uh, in the person of Dr. Sierra uh, uh, Dennis Morgan. Uh, Sierra has her PhD in psychology, and her training is so unique in that uh, as a part of her training, there was a theological track that she took, so she has a very clear uh, uh, theological foundation, but then there's also a clinical track that she has taken as well, of which there is now theology and therapy, and then there is this whole historical uh, black uh, church uh, uh, piece that she has a great understanding of. And in her doctoral work, she brings all of that together to um, uh, provide different approaches uh, for services in, in the African American and in the faith community. So we welcome her as a part of the team this morning. And uh, I'm going to ask her to give a quick overview of the Minority Behavior Health Group. And then we're going to get started and move forward uh, with our presentation on today. Dr. Morgan, will you jump in and give us that presentation, that quick uh, overview? Yeah, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm so happy to be here with you all. So the, the quick, quick overview of MBHG, uh, Minority Behavior Health Group, or as we call it, MBHG, is a community mental health agency. Um, we're a state certified in Ohio and nationally accredited in, this, in the country. Um, and of course, black owned. We were the first to have um, those accolades and certifications that we know of as far as being black owned. So we take a lot of pride in who we are and what we do. Um, and we provide assessment, psychological assessment, um, mental health therapy, management, prevention services, um, professional development workshops and training. And so, um, we provide a lot of services here in, in Akron, Ohio, but of course, too, throughout the country um, for workshops as well. Um, and so that's just a little bit about us, and we'll get into what that means and what it looks like as far as um, individual work and group work that we do with people um, and with the faith-based community and with other groups. Great. Thank you, Dr. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Dr. Morgan, for sharing with us uh, the information about uh, minority Behavior Health Group. We, we certainly appreciate that. Um, I want, we want to begin our um, presentation this morning um, around the theme that uh, Bishop Gunn 
sort of laid out for today, uh, spiritual leaders and mental health with the subtitle of um, I will be fine when this is is over. Um, I want to begin I want to begin this morning with an uh, with a passage of scripture that kind that kind of lays a foundation for uh, for where we are uh, for where we are going, and we're going to ask everyone to when you come into the uh, the conference if you can mute your phones please. God bless you. There we go. That's that's it. Okay, we want to begin with the passage of scripture. Say a couple things about this passage, and then kind of move into our presentation on the morning. Um, I've shared my screen uh, with you all, so you can kind of follow along with us in terms of what we're doing. The passage of scripture that we want to focus on as we began, is a very familiar passage in Philippians chapter four, verse 13. And it kind of frames for us, um, sets the framework for where we are going and how we are thinking. This familiar passage from the King James Version says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Many of us uh, use that verse, quote that verse quite a bit. Um, and it is a very uh, strong and powerful verse. Let me just share with you a few things that I hear from this verse and I see in this verse that will help us as we uh, move forward. First of all, this verse, uh, in this verse, Paul is really um, sharing and uh, we see very clearly the articulation of an affirmation. The articulation of an affirmation. And um, Paul says at a very difficult time in his life, he says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. So there is this articulation of this affirmation. He's affirming some things as he shares this particular truth with um, those who would read this letter that we call Philippians. In addition to that, in this verse, we see that Paul sets forth an agenda with action. Because in the verse, he talks about doing and he talks about things. So not only is there the articulation of an affirmation, but there is also an agenda with, accurate, with, with action. Um, I can do all things. Mm -hmm. But then thirdly in the verse, he shares the announcement of present and future accomplishments. He says, I can do all things and he, he doesn't say, I can try to do all things. <laughs> he says, I can do all things. And so he's really making an announcement of present and future accomplishment. But that's not all that's in the verse. He also is giving an acknowledgement of the Almighty. He says, I can do all things through Christ. And so he acknowledges uh, uh, Christ. Uh, all things were made by him, and without him, there was not anything that was made, that was made, as John says in his gospel. So he acknowledges the Almighty. And then the last thing uh, in this verse I'd like to share that kind of sets forth where we're going is we see the, um, the acceptance of anointed strength. Paul says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. And the Greek word for strength means to empower. It means to enable. And what Paul is really saying is when it comes to facing the various things that I need to face, the strength of Christ makes me capable. <laughs> the strength of Christ makes me capable. So this, this verse kind of sets the framework for where we are going in terms of with our presentation on today. And again, I read it again for all of us. <clears throat> I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. The articulation of an affirmation, an agenda with action, an announcement of future accomplishment, acknowledgement of the Almighty, <clears throat> and the acceptance of anointed 
strength. Now, as we move into our presentation this morning, and Dr. Morgan and I are going to kind of be going back and forth on some things, and then we're going to open up for questions uh, as well once we kind of work through some of this. Um, um, here, here are four categories of mental health for pastors <clears throat> that we've kind of talked about in the past when we were had the privilege of uh, being a part of the intensive um, earlier uh, on, on last year. We kind of shared some of these points. Let's walk through them very quickly, and this will lead us to um, a section that uh, we want to deal with that's really important. Four categories of mental health for pastors. We talked about the first area is what we call the valley experiences. And I talked about how for me, this was sparked by a message that I heard Dr. A. Lewis Patterson preach from years ago. And when he talked about uh, Psalm 23 and that whole valley experience. And so when it comes to the pastor, this particular area of mental health is personal. We talk about valley experiences. We're talking about things that are personal to us, our family, our health, uh, our physical health, our finances. Um, valley experiences are things that we have to deal with, and valley experiences are things that impact our mental health. The second area that we talked about in the past is what we call vicarious trauma. And that's, that's an area where we take on the issues, the trauma, the stresses, the pressure of people that we are connected to. And so that, uh, like for instance, our parishioners, their problems become our problems, their issues become our issues. And we vicariously carry the weight of what they are dealing with on our shoulders. And so not only is there the, the personal things that we deal with in our own personal valley experiences, but even during this season, we're vicariously carrying the weight, the stress, the pressures, the pain of our parishioners with us. The third area that we talk about that impacts our mental health are the vicious attacks that we receive. Now, just because we are in this um, uh, coronavirus season, the uh, personal attacks from what I call pernicious predators, the personal attacks or vicious attacks from people have not stopped. There are still some people who are, who are still talking about us, who are still planning traps for us, who are still putting us down. And we feel not only the weight of the season that we are in, but we also are dealing with these personal, these vicious attacks, and that can impact our mental health as well. The fourth area is where we want to get to, where we want to land at, and where we want to be. And I call that a victorious, unreachable place. A place where our problems and the problems of, of our parishioners and others, a place where they cannot reach us. It is a place of mental peace and wellness. And so in our time together, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, a, a process that we can um, go through to, to get there. Now, there is a... Um, a um, belief system analysis that we use at Minority Behavior Health Group. I want to share this with you. Dr. Morgan is going to share this with you. And then there are some statements after she shares this, there are some statements that we have connected to um, this particular uh, belief system analysis. And we'll see how this, this particular system can help us in terms of dealing with what we're facing today. And we'll be more specific as relates to the season as we move on. Dr. Morgan, can you take it uh, and explain this for us? So in joining um, theology and therapy together, this is a theory um, of therapy that we use at, at Minority Behavioral Health Group and that's also used across the country. So I 
theory is a psychological theory that was uh, created by Dr. Linda James Myers um, back in 1988. And the theory is so interesting because it's the only one um, within psychology, within counseling, that considers the impact of oppression. And so especially when we're talking about um, black and brown people, that's an important part of how we experience um, psychological distress. And so it is the only theory that looks at and considers the impact of oppression on how we experience depression, anxiety, trauma, uh, any maladaptive coping, and different things like that that ultimately um, create sickness or illness within us um, is the result of oppression. And when I'm talking about oppression, I'm talking about um, any type of any ism, racism, sexism, et cetera. And Dr. Lodge talked about this a little bit um, in what Bishop Guns hosted for us on Thursday night as well. Um, so that's the theory. But from the theory to make that practical, then it's belief systems analysis. And belief systems analysis is the treatment modality that we use as therapists, as counselors, when working with people and walking alongside them um, as a part of their healing. Within belief systems analysis, Dr. Myers identifies six values or principles that we call them to help along that healing process. And so we just wanna look at those six values today um, and we're going to apply some affirmations. And we also many times like to apply scripture um, to this as well because it fits very nicely. Um, and it, as we talk about this being an African-centered approach, it also is a Christocentric approach. And so the first principle that you'll see, and some of these are out of order, but we're gonna go in order on the next slide. But on this slide, starting at spiritual development, um, that is the first principle or value that we talk about within belief systems analysis. And spiritual development is this idea um, that we are connected to the creator, connected to God, and that we are not just physical beings. And so we all know that and are familiar with that, but at different seasons and different points in our lives, we may feel more connected, less connected, or have some different barriers or challenges within our spiritual development. And so that principle or value looks at that and focuses on how do we develop spiritually. The next uh, one I would like to go to and talk about is intrinsic self-worth, because when we understand that we're connected to God, connected to our creator, then we also understand that we have purpose and that we have value. And so many times we hear about people talking about self-esteem and et cetera, but within, the, within Christ, we know that we have purpose. And so intrinsic self-worth is speaking on this idea um, that we have purpose and that God has put us here and birthed us and we're birthed into purpose and that he knew us even when we were in our mother's womb. And so that's intrinsic self-worth is that our lives have purpose, our lives have worth and value. Um, from intrinsic self-worth, there's this value of self-knowledge. And the, the idea here is that everything, all information that we receive has to be filtered through ourselves so that we can understand how it sits with us, how we understand it, and what we can do with it as we maneuver through life. And so that's self-knowledge and building is very important. From self-knowledge, um, we then go into extended self-identity. And extended self-identity is this value and, and principle that suggests that I am not just who I am on my own, but I am who I am in connection to my ancestors in connection to those who come after me, so my children, the yet unborn, in connection to my community. Um, and so Sierra is not just Sierra, but Sierra is connected to those around her, my parents, ancestors, my children, et cetera. Um, and all of nature as well as what this principle includes. Um, two more, and then we're gonna apply some affirmations to this. Uh, Diunita logic is one that is very, um, that we appreciate a lot in our faith when talking about diunital logic and that it's this idea that things are both and and so nothing is just either or it's not just black or white but things are good and bad and can have it can have duality to it um, that there can be a storm but then also be a rainbow um, and that both things can exist at the same time and learning how to not be rigid in our thinking appreciate both aspects and all sides of things and then from diunit logic, it's just this uh, holistic worldview is this principle that kind of sums it all. Um, also considers how all things work together. And so the psychological, the social, the spiritual, the physical, um, how all things have to be considered and, and should be considered um, to have a holistic worldview because that will help us in our healing and help us as we uh, maneuver through life as we have a holistic worldview and not just one that is, um, is segmented or separated. So that's a brief overview on the principles and we're gonna connect these to affirmations and I'll pass it back to Pastor Ben. All right, thank you, Dr. Morgan. So in, in this particular theory that we use, uh, we begin with the ideal of spiritual development. 
And here, here's an affirmation, here's a statement that you can use to help understanding what, and on the psychological side, when we talk about spiritual development, what we mean. Here's the statement, spiritual development. The desire to connect with the divine is the key to our deliverance, discovery of our purpose, perseverance, and personal development. So when we talk about spiritual development, we're talking about the importance of connecting with the divine, with the creator. And as a result of that, that becomes the key to these other things, deliverance, discovery of purpose, perseverance, and spiritual development. So the key to survival is connecting with the divine, okay? And so we begin right there. In intrinsic self-worth, for instance, um, here's a statement that we use as we talk about intrinsic self-worth. The creator sends us into the world with a purpose that is personal and perfectly addresses a present predicament. Let me read that again. God, the creator, sends us into the world with a purpose that is personal and perfectly addresses a present predicament. Sometimes we forget the fact that even with what we are going through right now, God has chosen us to pastor through this season. <laughs> God created us and sent us into the world so that we can do what we do during this coronavirus season. We come into the world with Pur purpose. We have intrinsic self-worth. We are valuable to God. Like he told Jeremiah, before you were formed in the womb, came forth from your mother's womb, he said, I knew you and ordained you. I set you apart to be a prophet unto the nation. Intrinsic self-worth. Self-knowledge. Here's a statement that we connect with that. Consistently learning about myself puts me on the road to a discovery that leads to my deliverance, development, deployment, and destiny. So as I learn about myself, I'm discovering things that show me how to live, how I develop, where I should be, and where I'm going. This is all a part of the therapeutic plan. Couple more, and then we'll get into this process of what we can do. Uh, Dr. Morgan's gonna lead us in those in just a moment. Extended self-identity. Here's what we mean when we say that, as Dr. Morgan said. My ancestors have poured into me like a libation, authenticating um, my purpose and clearly presenting a process that empowers me to pour into others. My ancestors have done this. And that's sort of even like what, Dr., what Bishop Gunz is doing now with this intensive. He has created things which allow us to pour into each other, which authenticates purpose and, and, and empowers us to, to, um, to also pour into others. All right, the next one, diunital di logic. We, what we understand when we think about diunital logic, delightful and difficult situations work together to produce me, a powerful, productive person. Now, listen, y'all, I could preach on this one, okay? I could talk about this all day. Because diunital logic, as Dr. Morgan says, said that we have two things going on, good and bad, and how the creator causes it all to work together for our good. So I know many times we talk about how uh, in business, people will say the devil is in the details. But let me tell you something. When you think of diunital logic, the devil is not the only one in the details. God is in the details as well. Because every time the devil makes a move, God makes a move. I'm going to almost start preaching. Let me back up a little bit. <laughs> he, he causes all things to work together for our good is good and bad. And then last but not least, holistic worldview. When we say this, 
as Dr. Morgan said, the principles and the, the uh, belief system analysis that we use helps us to come up with a statement like this. I am an overcomer who is overcoming the oppression, opposition, and obstacles in my life. And so because of this holistic worldview, we're able to do this. Now, Dr. Morgan is going to walk us through this process where we have alliterated with, alliterated with H's, and she's going to kind of walk us through, and I'm going to come back and tie a couple passages of scripture to it, and then we're going to hopefully get into some questions and some answers. Dr. Morgan, can you take it from here? So what's really nice, too, about um, the joining of the theology and therapy, um, as well as that in the theory that we're talking about, and as we apply this, it talks about this theory being participant to participant. And so as pastors, I think many times we see, and, and faith leaders, we see this and we receive this information and think about how we can use it to help others. But this process also is for us to use and apply to ourselves. So as we walk through this process, you can think about how this really fits and applies to you. Um, and so starting first with hurt, and so connecting this to uh, the therapeutic process, one of the first steps um, when engaging in therapy or when starting our own process, um, is to acknowledge and identify what our hurt is. Um, and that's very important. It, it, it helps us to start with insight and awareness. And we know that insight and awareness increases, but we can't go anywhere or do anything without first having this insight and awareness about what our hurt is, what our stressors are, what has happened, what it is that we're trying to resolve, what we're trying to work through. Um, and so that is what we're talking about when we look at, at the hurt that's present and being honest about the hurt and being vulnerable about what that hurt is. The next H is this idea of help. And so once we've acknowledged something, identified it, uh, we then can say, this is something that I can't do on my own or something I would benefit from, from using some help with. And so uh, pastor's gonna give us a, a couple verses or a verse to really identify help. And so whether that's help from family, friends, a third party, um, a, a therapist, whether it's help that we provide to others as a pastor or a faith leader, but this idea, the, the understanding that something is, is bigger than just myself and that I can uh, rely on the creator and also rely on my community to help me with this hurt. Once we identified the hurt, have said we are willing and open to receiving some help, we then can look at this, this H of being heard. And heard is really important because many times you all as leaders hear people, but it's also important for you to be heard, to be affirmed, to be validated. And so it's this idea of hearing yourself out loud speak about what your hurt is, about what's going on, but then also to be validated in being heard. What's it like for you to be heard and to receive um, being heard by God, by a third party, by someone else, um, by your community. And within all of that, um, and this is not just a linear process that goes from top to bottom. Of course, you can move throughout this and they all work together. Um, it's, it's to heal. And so when being heard and when going through this healing process, um, healing is all through this as you go through each step. It's all a part and it's not just something that happens and then we're healed. It's a healing process. Um, and so this H talks about the process of healing, patient with ourselves um, and being patient in, in the process that has to take place. Everything is process oriented. Um, the H, the next H is for him and recognizing that um, our him is our creator. As we are going through healing, uh, many times we have to reconnect over and over again every day, sometimes moment by moment with the him and with the creator, recognizing who he is um, that helps us in our healing process because we can get it confused and think that it's something different, but we have to always go back to how he is a part of our healing process. The H for history um, can look at history from a couple different perspectives. So we can look at, and, and biblically we see uh, these many examples in, in the Bible of history and how people have overcome and how God has, has healed and, and walked alongside people. Um, and we have the history of, in the biblical text. Um, we also have the history of our own lives and we can recall and think back to times that we have overcome and things that have <laughs> passed and using that history to allow us in whatever our current hurt is to work through that. Um, we can also look at the, the history of our people and how we've overcome as black people. Um, so there's, as history can be 
utilized in a variety of different fashions to help us in our, our healing process. Also, what's really important throughout our healing is the hallelujah and always finding a praise, finding some gratitude um, in everything that we're working through. And so there's always a hallelujah there. So when we talk about that, that principle of that unit you know, of logic of things being both in, although there is hurt, there's also a hallelujah. And so holding both of those at the same time. Um, and then all of these H's working together, if we utilize these and how we move through them, um, it helps us to have a, a more healthy perspective. It helps us to be more healthy in our survival and have a healthy view um, so that we can keep our hope as we are working through our own healing and as we help those go through their healing process. All right, thank you, Dr. Morgan, um, all for that. Very quickly, we'll walk through this. That was very, really good. We'll walk through this, and then Bishop Gunn's after this, if, if we're, uh, we'll want to turn it back over to you so we can maybe answer some questions. Um, we looked at this in the past, but here's a biblical example of where um, uh, an individual experienced some of these things and expressed some of these things, and the desire was there for healing. Uh, when you look at Psalm 77, we, we talk about Asaph, and we know that his background, he was a writer of songs. He was one who had to know the word of God, the biblical lyric, so that the songs would be theologically correct. He was a witness to who Yahweh was. He was a worshiper. He knew something about spiritual warfare because in warfare, back in those days, it was common for the people of God to send the worshipers out first and the worshipers would start singing and bragging and boasting on what God was going to do. Um, but in, when you read Psalm 77, you discover that here is this person who is this great spiritual leader who is responsible for leading. In the text, in the psalm, he's wondering, he's weary, and he's worried. And many of us, we have the responsibility of leading, but we're wondering about some things. We've got some challenges right now. We're weary. And the truth of the matter is, as we're looking at the psalm, we're actually hurting. And here's the issue, brothers and sisters, even though we are God's children, and even though we have been appointed by God to serve where we serve, even at the season that we are in right now, we still have to acknowledge that our hurt and our pain is real. So as Dr. Morgan was saying, that's where it begins. We don't have to fake and try to make folks feel that we're super spiritual by saying that we never hurt. If we hurt, we hurt. <laughs> and that's why in Psalm 77, Asaph, he, he's hurting. He's crying out to the Lord. He, he, he wants the Lord to listen to him. In verse 2, he says, I'm in deep trouble. I've been searching for the Lord. All night long, I, I prayed with hands lifted toward heaven. My soul was not comforted. And he even, I think we said this last time we were together, some, some suggest that he was at a point where he was hurting so bad, uh, Dr. Morgan, that his worship didn't even work. <laughs> he was just hurting. And so he acknowledges his hurt in the, in the psalm. He also acknowledges that he needs help. In verse 3, he says, I'm longing for his help. So the process is acknowledge our hurt. It's all right to say that we need help. Number three is Dr. Morgan was saying, Asaph, he needs to be heard. He wants God to hear him. There's some stuff on the inside that he, he has to get out. And so pastors, what I'd like to suggest is the first thing that we do, let's take an inventory, take an inventory of what's really on the inside of us, what we're really dealing with, and then secondarily, let's talk about it. Let's not keep it in. Let's talk about it. Let's share it. Because there's healing when we are heard. As Dr. Morgan says, being heard gives us a sense of a way that we keep our sanity, that we know that we're human, that we're okay, that somebody is there to listen to us. And so in the psalm that he wants to be heard, he, his desire is to, is to be healed, for sure. Desire is to, to, to be healed. And so the whole idea of God, I don't want to stay here. I want healing. 
And whenever we think of healing, as Dr. Morgan says, I like this, uh, Dr. Sear, as you said that, healing should point us to him. <laughs> healing should make us think about him, think about God. And in the psalm, the writer starts thinking about God. And whenever we think about God, we think about history. Because in biblical texts, like you were saying, Dr. Morgan, God always reminds his people of what he has done for them in the past. <laughs> and if he did it before, he can do it again. And so thinking about him reminds us of history which leads us, as you said, to a hallelujah and which helps us to remain healthy. I know I kind of ran through that, but, but that's the process that, that we want you to think about, uh, uh, pastors, uh, to go through. Identify your hurt. It's all right to ask for help. Talk to somebody so you can be heard. Look and search for your healing. Let your healing connect you to him. When you think about him, let him take you back to everything he's done for you in the past, which will lead you to a praise of hallelujah, and it can get us to a place of where we can maintain our mental and spiritual health. Bishop Gunn, we want to turn it back over to you, and God bless you. Thank you for this particular time. I want to first say thank you for extending us your wisdom and uh, for, for the persons who have gotten on this, this information is priceless. Um, if there are any questions, you, you can type them in now um, and, uh, and, and, and you can share your questions now. So if you have any questions, you can type them in now. Okay. Um, we, we, we did record this, so we are going to put this on Facebook and YouTube. And so I would encourage that you encourage others to, uh, to, to watch this. It's, it's much needed and it's much necessary. If you're, if you're interested, how, how can they reach out to you, Dr. Dennis and Dr. Morgan? If, if someone wants to reach out to you, how can they reach out to you? Dr. Morgan? So they can um they can reach out. So we're MBHC has a Facebook page, so we are on Facebook Minority Behavior Health Group or info uh, I N F O at MBHG.org is also a way to reach out. Um, so we can be found on Instagram or Facebook and you could just shoot us an email uh, info at mbhg.org. Phenomenal. And if you so, if you want to call the office, you can also call us at 330-374-1199. You can reach us there as well. Okay. Um, again, this is probably one of the most important presentations that any of us in ministry can have in this time. And I want to thank, uh, thank this incredible father-son duo and this amazing group of people. Um, we're going to continue to offer some things. Dr. King Walker um, is going to be on Monday sharing something. So, uh, uh, King, why don't you jump on and just kind of share share what you'll be doing on this Friday, on this Monday? Dr. Walker. Okay, he, he, he's still on mute. Unmute yourself, sir. You hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. <laughs> uh, good morning, good afternoon. Well, still good morning. Um, Bishop, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, Pastor uh, Dennis, what a great uh, presentation. I logged great. on for the first part and I had to jump off and come back on, but Bishop, I wanted to say thank you for this chance. On Monday night, uh, just to give segue, my doctoral dissertation was on clergy, clergy holiness and self-care, uh, the care of self and society. And so I have 
uh, a clinical psychologist um, who will come on and just talk about how do we process as pastors. Um, I like the title of today because it gives segue. I'll be fine after this. And so I think coupled with today and uh, Monday night, it'll give us strength. It is almost like a part two. Uh, how do we practically deal with not as pastors, but some of the strains that come with pastors, but more so uh, in the book, uh, pastors are people too. I'm just concerned about how we as individuals. And so uh, Bishop Gus oftentimes tells this story about he has a friend that calls and says, I'm calling to see if the light is still on. So Monday is just to check to make sure that our lights are still blinking and functioning. And so if you are uh, available Monday night at 8.30, uh, if you're on Dr. AZ Walker, it's up there, it's for all pastors. And uh, then I'm excited about how me and Bishop can move together uh, in the future and partner. So please join us Monday night if possible. Thanks, Bishop. Phenomenal. Uh, again, thank everybody for jumping on. Um, we're going to keep having these conversations even after this is over. And uh, Dr. Walker and I are looking at ways to partner. Of course, we have Pastor Dennis. So there are a number of, of voices, um, um, but these two today are to me two of the most important voices. So again, God bless everybody. Have a great weekend. However you are streaming your services or, or sharing the gospel and uh, stay encouraged and please find someone to talk through this season with. I have people like, I'm like Dr. Dennis, like um, I'm Dr. Jerry Carter, who I saw was on, um, who I talked through this season with. Do not go through this season and not have someone to talk to. All of my KFI sons and daughters, we have each other. Let's make sure that we're staying connected. Love you guys, and we will see you guys very, very soon. See you guys on Monday. Be blessed. God bless you all.